Uh, welcome to General Conference Conversations, the podcast where we have conversations about General Conference. I'm your host, Kaylin, and I'm super excited to be here with you, studying the words of our living prophets, apostles, and chosen leaders. I've loved listening to podcasts about Come Follow Me, and I saw a need for a podcast centered around the General Conference talks. Um, I'm not a scholar, I'm not an expert, I'm a 20 something who just simply adores the gospel. The things I discuss are my opinions. Um, as one of my favorite podcasts, At Last She Said It, often says, your mileage may vary. In addition to my connections and thoughts, I will include a list of questions at the end of every episode as a place to start with your own deeper study of each talk. And I hope this podcast will be a jumping off point as you apply these principles to your life. In that spirit, I invite you to read and study today's talk before listening to this episode. Listen for what the Lord is saying to you personally. Then come join me for a beautiful discussion together. Good morning. Um, I'm back. I'm never sure how to like start these things, so I'm just awkward. Um, today's episode is going to be pretty short because the talk we're talking about is pretty short. Um, it's actually just not really a talk. I mean, it is, but it's it's the introductory message for the women's session by President Oaks, and um, it is it's very short. Um, it's only like maybe f- ten paragraphs. Um, <clears throat> and it was only four four minutes long, so it's quite short. But I think it's important. So, so this was the like I said, it was the introductory message um, for the women's session, and this was the first time. So a few years ago, they announced that. Okay, let me back up. So for a long time, the women's session of general conference was held the week before the general sessions. So they would have it Saturday night a week before. And the priesthood session would be the Saturday night, Saturday evening session during general conference weekend. And then a few years ago they announced that, that's how I grew up with it. And then a few years ago they announced that they would switch off. So priesthood session would be in April. General women, women's session would be in October um, on that Saturday evening. So they would just kind of switch back and forth. And then um, April, was April 2020, was, um, I mean, that was a big first vision, 100 or 200 years since the first vision stuff. And so um, the Saturday evening session, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it was that, that conference. The Saturday evening session was just another general session. Like, it wasn't for any specific um, organization. It wasn't... It was for just everybody, like, eight years and older, basically. Um, And then... I can't remember what it was in October 2020. It would have been... I'm trying to think. I mean, it might have been a women's session. I don't remember. But then between October and April, they were like, oh, we're getting rid of the Saturday evening session altogether. And then they changed their minds. They were like, actually, no, we're going to keep it. Um, and now I'm forgetting what the next one was. But this one was um, a women's session. Even though you know, from their announcement a couple of years ago, this would have been a priesthood session, because it's April. So, kind of surprising, didn't realize, I didn't realize that at the time. Um, I remember be, everybody being like, oh, there's general women's session, and I love women's session, because we get to hear from women. <laughs> but, um, anyway, so that's a brief history, just of the last, like, ten years or so. Uh, I don't remember how long the general women's session had been going on. I looked it up the other day, but I, f- I can't remember 
off the top of my head. But um, the thing that's interesting to me in this talk is when I heard it, I was like, wow, that's a lot of changes, that's amazing, I love this, yada, 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 and as I read through it this time, I just wasn't impressed, (laughs) and I, that's gonna sound really bad, but I feel like it was made out to be this, like, big, huge thing, um, when in reality, it's, it's actually pretty small, like, um, but I'll get to that, but, so, he starts out, starts out, words, he starts out by talking about, um, he's like, our Saturday sessions have had different purposes and different audiences, and he's like, this evening we had, add to that history as we embark upon a new purpose and procedure for the foreseeable future, and then he goes on to say, the gospel of Jesus Christ does not change, gospel doctrine does not change, our personal covenants do not change, but over the years, the meetings we hold to communicate our messages do change, and very likely will continue to change over the years. And one, I think it's funny that he has to like, that they reiterate that every time they make a change, because we are we literally have a belief in ongoing restoration. We literally have a belief in ongoing revelation, um, that like, there are things that God will yet reveal that he hasn't revealed yet. <laughs> like, we bl- literally believe in a gospel, like, a gospel of change, no, but, like, that, you know, tomorrow President Nelson could come out with some new revelation, and we'd be like, oh, yep, yeah, that's happened before. Um, we might be shocked, <laughs> but, um, like, the world changes, and customs change, so our practice of the gospel is going to change. The gospel won't change. Like Jesus Christ still teaches us to love our neighbors, to have faith in him, to make covenants with him, to repent and come unto him. But like the way that we do that might change a little bit. And so I was thinking about all the changes that have happened just in my lifetime. I'm 24, and, um, I lost my train of thought, I'm so sorry, oh, hmm. um, well, this thing with the general women's session moving to, to the Saturday of general conference, that happened, um, I think just a couple years before I went on my mission, uh, right before I went on my mission, right before I got my endowments, they changed the endowment, um, proceedings, and I think they had changed it just a few years before that as well, before I, you know, really understood what that meant, right, um, they changed it to two hours instead of three, um, come fall me was introduced, they got her, they've gotten rid of personal progress and Boy Scouts, and even, like, activity days and stuff are now, like, the Children and Youth Initiative are all kind of the same. Um, they've changed a lot recently with, like, clarifying the bishop's role in, you know, leading the youth and being the, um, president of the young men's. So, like, they don't have young men's president at the ward level anymore. Um, there's just been a lot of little things, right? And even recently with the temple again, um, with certain, like, things that have changed because of COVID, or maybe not because of COVID, that were, but, like, because of COVID, but, like, are going to stay around, stick around, right? Um... And so, but yeah, just like little things that, or maybe not little things, right, some pretty big things, um, have happened in the last few years of just my life, and obviously I'm sure there are things that have changed in my whole lifetime that, like, I was too young to understand, um, or notice, 
Um, and so that's kind of my first question to you is like, what can you think of that has changed just in your lifetime? <laughs> like, um, you know, maybe you're way older than me and have seen a lot more changes um, than I have, or maybe you're younger than me and have seen fewer. But like, what can you think of off the top of your head that, that changed, has changed? Um, so the, the um, changes he's talking about, I think are kind of minimal, <laughs> personally, but that's just me. Um, so he talks about like, the Saturday evening meeting is a session of general conference, not a particular session of any organization. And like all sessions of general conference, planning of it and calling speakers and playing the music are designated by the first presidency. Um, so, like, if it were to be a priesthood meeting, the speakers and things are still chosen by the first presidency. The women's session, the speakers are still chosen by the first presidency. Um, the thing that I think changed is, he says, we have asked President Jean B. Bingham general president of the Relief Society to conduct this session. Future Saturday evening sessions may be conducted by one of the other general officers of the church, such as members of the general presidencies of Relief Society, gen young women, and primary designated by the first presidency. Um, and so that's something I've never seen. Um, is having a woman conduct a, a session of general conference. Um, I don't know if that's ever happened before. I know um, when it was the Release Society Conference, like way back at the beginning of the church, there were women who um, conducted, I think, I would assume. Um, Yes, I, I assume. <laughs> I don't know, uh, so don't quote me on that. But, um, because the Relay Society was its own organization back then, like, they called their own officers and, like, ran their own meetings without having to be, without being presided over by, like, uh, priesthood holders. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if like women conducted and things like that but I mean it personally it was my first time seeing like a woman conduct or at least or a general especially a general session of the um conference of general conference so it was really cool to see President Bingham do that um but <laughs> like it's progress right <laughs> but we still have a long way to go I believe um I mean we only had I believe it was seven women speak in this last conference don't quote me on that I think I counted it the other day but it was like one woman in all of the like the four sessions and then three in the women's session and I know that there's only like nine to choose from <laughs> because um, they're chosen from you know obviously like general officers so the, we have the Relief Society president the primary president and presidency and the young women's presidency so it's only nine people nine women to choose from but um, still not enough in my opinion also um, and President Oak says this, he talks about, he's like, okay, and this Saturday evening session is concentrated on the concerns of Latter-day Saint women. Um, it is, he's like, this session is deliberately broadcast to a worldwide audience, and, but the audience invited to be present in the conference center is women and girls age 12, 12 and older. 
And he says, we have included some priesthood leaders who preside over the participating organizations. So there's still men there. Um, which, and I don't remember, I'm sure that they were there when the women's session was, um, like the week before. Um, I just think it's funny that there are still men who speak in the women's session when you would never see a man speak in the, or a, a woman speak in the priest session. Um, I just think that's ironic, but I have no place to change that, just pointing it out. But, I mean, this is the introductory message in the women's session by President Oaks, and then the last, the last talk in the women's session was by um, Elder Renland. So, yeah, just point, just, just point that out. Um, and then... So then he kind of goes on, he's like, this is, you know, we're here because, you know, we care about the women in the church and we want to honor the women in the church by concentrating on their concerns and the concerns of their organizations. So, um, but then he also talks about, like, we are grateful that broadcast technology now gives church leaders the capacity to pro- to conduct detailed training by addressing specific audiences in the field. So, like, and he talks about, like, travel was being able to be increased, like, after COVID, after the pandemic. So, um, so he's like that, you know, there are other, also other opportunities to have leadership training in the field and have more, um, personalized interactions, right, with, like, or area leaders, um, visiting specific stakes and missions and wards and things like that as needed. So, um, so that's kind of really it. Um, it's interesting, um, and exciting little steps of progress, right? Um, so my one question, of course, was, um, what changes have you seen in your lifetime in the church? Um, policies, practices, um, things like that, right? That, like, haven't changed the gospel, haven't changed the doctrine, but have changed how, maybe how you live it. Um, so yeah. So like I said, this is going to be very short, but um, the next episode will be a bit longer. So I'll see you then. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of General Conference Conversations. Be sure to follow and share us on um, any social media. And if you like the show, feel free to leave us a review or tell your friends. Until next time.